So now for my new favorite method, Florent Berthet from Slack Enov messaged me and showed me the Slack Enov split that he came up with. And I'm pretty excited about it. I think I'm gonna start using this way. So instead of putting the soft shackle on there like normal, you create an X, F, F, like an eight shape, figure eight. And instead of, so you, you, cr you cross it right, right there, then you go through your sewing loop and put it on like normal. Um, I don't find a locking method is ideal for this, but if I put that head inside of the loop, it gets rid of my button knot problem of passing the knot. And then you have this eight shape. And then the quick link goes over the X that it creates in the center. And then you just have your two loops in there. Now this is an eight millimeter quick link. There's a lot, it's a lot going on inside of there, but it's not likely, it's not big enough to be like moving around a lot. So you would just uh, tape this just like that. That button knot stays there and that's not too hard to pass a ring over. You can use a 10 millimeter quick link, which would fit in there quite a bit easier, but you're not going to be adjusting it a lot once it's installed. This all gets taped and you just basically leave it. Uh, the downside to tape is that you can't really inspect it. Um, you can feel around and see if anything shifted, but you're basically covering up everything you're trying to see during an inspection. So a variation on the Slack Enov split is to put a quick link in there. Uh, soft shackles on soft shackles rubbing against each other. It's not a problem. You're probably gonna get more damage having stainless steel rubbing against this. Things won't be rubbing. They'll be taped or Velcroed and secured. With that button knot, you can tuck that button knot right there and it'll sit quite nicely. You can adjust that and tape the crap out of it. Now, as far as this being pulled, these are not sharing any other quick links, so you only have two loops in here. If things were to pull apart, this is, this is solid. This backup is connected, the main is connected, and they're connected to each other. I really, really like how all of this is interconnected. And then you could tape that pretty easily and tape this. So what happens if these are all 50 meter pieces? You don't get to have loops in your backup if it's the same length as your main. So that brings us to extenders. One webbing extender idea is to have small pieces of webbing with sewn loops on the ends that you would connect to the backup loop. So all this action would be going on here at the Enob split. And then about four meters, three meters, five meters over, whatever you find is perfect for your webbing combination, um, it would just be connected over, over here. And that wouldn't be too hard to pass over or you could soft shackle that and then tape it. And it would be pretty bomber. However, Slack Enov's way of doing it is to get a six millimeter spliced eye Dyneema extender. And this is simple, smooth. This is about 7,000 pounds of force. Sorry, I can't think of the kilonewtons off the top of my head. And it's gonna be pretty much stronger than any webbing that you have. And you can make these at home at the length you want. Whereas the webbing extenders, you'd have to get them sewn and you'd have to be getting specific lengths. This is pretty self-explanatory that the eye goes on here, but girth hitched on here is a nice option instead of using a quick link because it's a lot easier to slide over. It eliminates one connector that could fail. We will slack snap the shit out of this to make sure it's safe, but this is fine in my opinion right now. So let me run through from beginning to end how to do the Slack Enov split. So I take this through here. I cross over inside of itself, kind of like you're gonna do a lock, um, a locked soft shackle, because it, it's the same concept, except we're gonna put the sewing loop right here. So you put the loop through there, the soft shackle. If you ever work with soft shackles enough, you won't be too concerned that they're gonna open. Put the knot right there, and then I'm going to put that facing down, and we're gonna put the loop here, because let's say the web lock 
is that way and so I'll have adjustability with that or I'll have an extender on that side of the end of this 50 meter. You only need to extend one side. Now you don't want to girth hitch like this because that can reduce the strength and you can see how that strangles that. What you want to do is you want to put the loop through the eye and then take the tail and go like that and roll that over and that's going to grab the webbing nicer and not pinch that Dyneema so much. This eye is connected here. Tighten that up. That'll get all taped up. Check everything. This will be on that side. And this is done. And then you would just tape the crap out of that. I would probably tape here, here, and then tape. What you'd want to do is you'd want to tape this soft shackle, the throat right there, tape that throat and then put them where they go and then tape the whole thing after that. And that is only two parts. This is something you can get at home for only a few dollars and make pretty simple. Uh, make sure you stitch this or do a brummeled lock. Slack Enov sells these in three and five meters, I believe, in length in case you want to buy uh, their method. They have soft shackles for this. This has a seven inch inside diameter on my red one here. Uh, five or six inches would be better. This is a four inch diameter soft shackle. So the inside space right here is four inches, which is too small to do this. So I'd say about six inches would be the perfect length of your soft shackle. And if you want some uh, flexibility in your extensions, what you do is you put it halfway through like this and then connect it to your soft shackle. And so they sell these in three and five meter lengths and that gives you options uh, in order to fold it in half or do the girth hitched method that I just showed you. So there are many ways, many ways to connect multiple lines together for long, long high lines. But I have a dream that all slackline companies and slackliners would all get together and get along and work together to make 50 meter long sections with sewn single sewn loops on the end. And we can all just standardize things and agree on extenders that we can use. And uh, you can use either metal quickly. You have to use a soft shackle for the, the slacking of split. But you can use a metal quick link in there if you want some variety for redundancy. However, um, this is amazing. It's light. It only takes two soft shackles. Either way, you need an extender without having to have very specific pieces where you have a 50, 55 meter, 50, 55 meter, 50, in order to have the, uh, everything's the same. I'm going to cut all of my webbing in my garage. I'm only going to buy 50 meters from now on with a single loop. And if I highline a 60 meter highline, yes, I will have a split in it. However, when I do a 350 meter line, I don't have to take a 700 meter long single piece of webbing. I can take exactly what I need for a trip down to 50 meters of what I need. And when we go on big hikes in Yosemite and some projects that we've got coming up on traveling, traveling's a lot easier with several 50 meter sections versus a kilometer of webbing. Another reason I'm really advocating for smaller pieces is I've heard two times that a team of people carrying a single long piece of webbing were walking in a hiking train where they're all interconnected so the webbing comes out of one bag and goes into the next person's bag and they're all doing these sketchy hikes and what's more dangerous than free soloing? Free soloing while attached to another person free soloing. So what's nice about smaller sections is you can do this in the field if you connected let's say three 50 meter sections and that goes in one person's bag and two 50 meter sections and that goes in another person's bag makes hiking easier and you just connect this on the spot when you arrive to your high line. You would just connect the top webbing to the bottom webbing of the next bag, connect that in there, label which sides top and bottom, you get that perfect and then when it comes out of this bag and runs out, the next bag goes out and is perfectly flaked when you show up. 
So thank you Florent Berthet and Slackinov for sharing this amazing method that I can now feel comfortable turning all my pieces into 50 meters and we're going to have future videos on us testing this in the park to see how it feels and what it feels like to connect on site. We're going to do a bunch of brake tests on um, splices on soft shackles and girth hitches versus quick links. We're going to break a ton of quick links. So make sure you subscribe, like, and follow to, to see all the future videos and follow-ups to this. And comment below, please, on pros and cons of this or another method you may come up with using the same criteria we were using. Or if I'm missing criteria, that could be important. And I will add those in the follow-up videos. This could be a five or six video series um, as I take my journey through connecting multiple lines with the Slacky Note Split. And thank you, Cam Peters, for filming this whole time and doing a lot of the setups for me while I was checking the edits. And because Cam and I are just two guys in a kitchen that we took an extra effort to clean up and rigged a really short slack line on a vodka bottle, a wine cabinet, and a stripper pole to show you and demonstrate something that's actually not been tested. Therefore, you shouldn't highlight. Hey, thanks for watching, but don't be an idiot and try this anywhere but at home because you might die. Go with people who have rigged kilometer long high lines so you can learn in person from them on how to do this stuff. As if that's an option for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, don't try to learn everything off of some YouTube channel about how to do this stuff because it is dangerous. Please go with people who do know what they're doing the first time you go out. Or you can hire me to do classes in person with you. Those can vary depending if I go to you, you come to me, if we just go to CRG, or if we take some wild helicopter ride and do something really fun. But private message me if you are interested in taking a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-five class if you have a group of friends that want to join on a project. Until you have a chance to cut all your webbing into small pieces to try something that hasn't been tested, check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe, like, or follow so you can see us actually test this.